TYT at the Bar is brought to you by our friends at Live Oak Bank. Check them out at liveoakbank.com. So I want to talk about our government, how it's run, who runs it, the way it's formed, who has influence and things like that. And we sort of accept as Americans that the way we do things in terms of our government is the best way. Uh, we have the longest running democracy, perhaps the most successful democracy, certainly over a long period of time in the world. And when we you know, have influence over other countries, when they revise their constitutions, when they go from one regime to another, we often think that they should do it the way we do. And we don't question it for the most part. Some groups have in the past, but I want to do it tonight. We have a, a, a democratic republic. People have influence over government. They, they vote for representatives who are supposed to at least represent their interests in government. But is that actually the best way to run things? We've had a lot of experience, and certainly you guys have been covering politics, so you see the way it works. Are you as sure today as you were going through high school civics lessons that democracy is the way to go? First of all, John, uh, you're obviously a traitor. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, and I'd like I'm going to lose my MSNBC show, I'm sure. <laughs> right. And I'd like to remind you that we're number one. So I, how dare you question mm -hmm. anybody? Mm -hmm. So look, uh, on issue by issue, we clearly are not doing things right on so health care. We're literally yes. number 37. So apparently, yeah. we're not quite doing that right. Uh, in education, we're falling way behind. And you go down the list, right? Now, is that because of democracy? No, of course, I would argue that it's because we've gone away from democracy. Mm -hmm. Instead, we're not catering to donors and their interests. And so you have these, for example, the, the rich kids are in all private schools. Yes. Yep. So our public schools are a disaster. So on right. average, our education scores are terrible. And that's because we have an oligarchy more yeah. than a democracy. So I'd like to get rid of the, our system of oligarchy that isn't working, right? So, so it's hard I'm glad to- you added that. Yeah, so it's hard to know whether democracy is the right way to go because we haven't had it in a while. So, mm -hmm. it, so you know, or how we think it should run certainly. I mean, right. bear in mind that uh, if we're 37th, then the 36 that are ahead of us almost all are democracies in one form or another. Perhaps more socialist and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but do you, do you think that? the average American with how interested they are in politics, oh how much they pay attention to things, do you think that they, that they benefit from the influence they have or the influence they think they have? Do you think that there could be a better system that produces better outcomes for people? Gosh, that's a, that's a day old question because when it comes to, I think we see this the most, especially now with social media where you can see everybody come out of the woodworks right before an election it's infuriating. Everybody has an opinion. Some people aren't, some people, a lot of people aren't educated on the issues. And right after I graduated from college, it was when I was really into politics. Like I was obsessed about it. And I would spend so much time debunking what, I'm not even gonna say her name, but she's a relative, um, <laughs> debunking what she was, what she was posting. Mm -hmm. And it was just just smear campaigns and it, it came from no facts and it pissed me off whether we agree or disagree that's fine but at least come from a place of an actual fact and then we can have a conversation and so that's where i get frustrated and i'm sure we can all share that frustration is is you look at the people that are voting and i'm not speaking for uh, the majority of people, but it is really infuriating it's a thought that keeps me up at night is these people that are voting we all have the right to vote thank god but some people a they don't care. Some people, they don't even show up. Other people, they're voting for, uh, you know, because of a specific political party, because of the way that they were conditioned, the way they were, they were brought up, or this is what they know, or, or certain, you know, whether they're a member of the NRA. And that's mm -hmm. what's scary, because those are what the people, is. exactly, mm -hmm. it, their church tells them to vote for this candidate. And mm -hmm. that's what really pisses me off. It's, it's because I'd rather them just come from a place of real facts, and then if it's an organic belief, Fine, I can respect that. But so, Stephen Colbert, of course, had the best line of well, maybe ever in politics. Reality has a well-known liberal bias, <laughs> right? And so, so yes, it's infuriating that they won't admit the facts, and and yes, it's infuriating that Fox News and all those other things spread all the propaganda out right. there, and people wholeheartedly believe it. It's infuriating that people don't know more mm -hmm. and they are not involved in the. Uh, in, in their government, because their government, whether they like it or not, actually makes a huge difference in their lives. Yeah. That's why we have the income inequality that we do now, mm -hmm. because the donors run the government, and hence they give themselves the advantages, and that's cost you a ton of money right. for every American, right? Yeah. That you could have given towards your family. Now, having said all of that, you're never gonna move me off of democracy. And right. it, so let me, let me lay it out in a couple of different ways, but the, the last one is most important. So morally, as far as a matter of justice, I, I believe in democracy that we should control our own fate, 
right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then, but if, I wouldn't leave it at just that. I, I think it's also the most effective system. Now, I don't often speak well of religion, but one of my favorite lines is from the Quran, uh, where Muhammad says, my people shall not uh, agree on a falsehood. Okay, mm -hmm. so in the short term, yes, oftentimes <laughs> we'll elect George W. Bush, or yeah. we, we will believe something that's not necessarily true, so if both mm -hmm. veterans, yada, yada, they right? They did believe, after all, that he spoke to angels. <laughs> right, <laughs> like there's that, the fact that they believe in religion at all, right? But in my experience, in the long term, the people come to the right decision, because the masses are in 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 combination together smarter than any one person yes. mm -hmm. like a lot of times people think oh no masses equals dumb i don't think so yeah. i think there is definite wisdom in the masses you just can't look at it just in the short term you have to take a long term view of yeah. it yeah so i'm going to have a few sort of example poss possible things we could replace it with i understand oh, i'm playing okay. devil's advocate of course i i love american democracy i think it has a great pedigree but there are other potential ways we could fix it. And I think that it's not purely sort of a, I don't know, an esoteric discussion, a theoretical discussion. There are threats today that are different than threats in the past. Threats that you, you say eventually the masses will, will decide in the right way. But what if we don't have time for them to eventually catch up? What if you're talking about something like climate change, where if you don't fix it in time, there's no point in fixing it at all? What if, I, I don't know, some, the, the way that our economy is structured, what if not dealing with rising healthcare costs lead to the entire system being broken before it can be fixed? Like, perhaps you can't wait in a way that you could have 100 years ago for the masses to, to sort of catch up. You're, that's so poignant because if we don't Thank have you. gun reform now, if we don't have mental health care reform now, there's going to be more mass shootings. We need to act now. Mm -hmm. Now. Right. No, the only problem is history has shown us over and over again when one person or even a set of people become convinced that they know better than everyone else, it usually leads to disastrous consequences. I'm pretty sure of myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, is it the wine? I've read a lot of books. Oh, the okay. wine certainly helps. So, so John, of, your best point of, is climate change, right? Yeah. So yes, there is a tipping point. Once you get past the tipping point, we are screwed. And unfortunately, uh, people will see it in their lives and hence adjust mm -hmm. probably after the tipping point, yeah. by the nature of the problem. Yeah, right? I mean, we might already be past right. that point. But, but, we, but we are resilient little creatures, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and there's a reason why we're the most successful virus on the planet. <laughs> okay, it's because <laughs> sometimes you think you're past the tipping point and there's nothing you can do, but once we wake up, turns out there's yeah. a lot we can do. So I don't want to rely on that, and that's a really bad idea, and I hope we can convince people before that time. Mm -hmm. But I, I trust, uh, everybody put together a lot more than I trust one person. Yeah. yeah. But by the way, I can totally see how this is going to be spun by Fox if they pay attention to it. Liberal TYT says democracy should be overthrown to deal with climate change, <laughs> which is <laughs> not what we're saying. Calm right. down, Hannity. And now we're drunk. And, exactly. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, once they start they drinking, drinking, then the truth wine. comes out. They couldn't even drink Budweiser yeah. while overthrowing the government. OK, so uh, eventually, 10 minutes into a conversation, I have to bring up some sort of sci-fi possibility but yes. let's say hypothetically you could program some sort of learning supercomputer with uh, all of the different government and policy experiments that have been run in countries around the globe, different ways to organize the economy, healthcare system, and things like that, how to deal in terms of diplomacy and dealing with problems between states. And it produced ob objectively better outcomes that if you had President AI. Would that be acceptable? Like you say, fundamentally, you don't want to give, get rid of your free will, and I, I feel the same way. But what if the economy did better, and people lived longer, that's and they were so more educated? Funny. That's so funny you say that, because I'm now reading a book that one of our viewers gave us. It's an old book from 1952 by Kurt Vonnegut called Player Piano. You should read that book. I've read a lot of Vonnegut. I haven't heard that. OK, because that's the whole premise of the book. They build machines that are better than humans. And mm -hmm. so the machines start running everything, and it's actually great because they make more money and everybody's comfortable. And but you know what winds up happening is that people hate it because yeah. you've taken away their purpose in life. Right. Like they okay. they liked like they thought they didn't like being a plumber and a mechanic, etc. But in fact, they actually did like it because they felt like I'm good at this, mm -hmm. I'm worth something. Serve a purpose. Yeah. Right. And so I will not let the machines <laughs> yeah, take I don't over, want the John. Yeah, the machines taking over either. Yeah. yeah. 
No, no. even if it left us more time to talk about the news online or something. <laughs> you just want a cyborg girlfriend. That's all you want. I'm getting that either way, AI or not. <laughs> um, okay, so here's here's another random idea that, that a friend of mine, uh, he's not a poli-sci major, but he, he's a psychology guy, and so he has some interesting thoughts about politics. So right now we have representatives. And uh, we theoretically could vote for whoever we want. But in reality, we don't get that choice. We get the choice between a couple of Democrats or Republicans in a primary, and then we choose the person who shares a party label with us in the general election. Um, and the people who will go through the process of campaigning and raising money and going through debates, very rarely does it seem like they are being driven by caring about the issues. Very often it doesn't seem like they even yeah. have a stance on the issues. So theoretically, what if instead we had some sort of drafted Congress? Like where you had a chance. President? Well, no, but <laughs> Money out of politics? What if, what if theoretically <laughs> everybody had an equal chance of being drafted to Congress for a year or two year term? They'd be paid enough that you know, they'd be able to live on, but it wouldn't be an incentive for them to try to retain their positions or anything like that. Like an actual representative sample of America would we be any better off yeah. than these self-interested politicians who are not representing us at the end of the day anyway? Then it's a game of odds, though, depending on the person's qualifications and their uh -huh. interests. But now we don't even care about I their agree. qualifications. I agree. That's a, that's, a, that's a really weighted question. OK, so two things about that. One, we cannot do that with the president. Okay, We <laughs> no, could do it with Congress, but we <laughs> can't do it with the president. <laughs> like, you get some random yeah. dude who, like, who, Dave Can Kohler. you imagine? <laughs> and then it's just World War IV. Like, yeah, that's what he I, wants. I, Probably I, I was thinking, like, some Fox News viewer or, like, like a Ted Nugent fan or something, you oh went with Dave gosh. Kohler, who's or, one of the founders yeah. of the Young Turks. But okay, Clive, Clive and Bundy. Like, as like a worst case scenario, <laughs> no, no, Dave no, no, Kohler. Just an interesting <laughs> scenario. An interesting scenario. Okay, so but for and Congress, he always pays attention to politics. Yeah. Yeah. Now I, I wouldn't normally do it. I, um, you're not going to move me off of democracy okay. as it as it's supposed to be. But if you said that system or the one we currently have, mm -hmm. it's actually a no-brainer. I would go with that system. Oh, interesting. OK, because right now, really? yeah, because right now, the guy with more money wins 95% of the time. Yeah. It's And the mm -hmm. Princeton Research Survey showed that since like 1979, 1,800 policies they studied. They directly correlated with elite Correlated interests. with what the donors and the elites wanted. Yeah. And they had no correlation to what the American public wanted. So yeah. that's what I mean by we've lost our democracy. And so if you just pick random guys instead of the guys who directly work for the donors, yeah. then your you're random guys are, yeah. are better off if you've yeah. got in, in, a, in big enough numbers. Yeah, but, if, you're, if your choice is snake eyes or rolling the dice, you'll roll the dice, yeah, I but suppose. Yeah. Think the lobbyists are going to be one step ahead of the game, and they're going to have a contingency plan, and they're going to go for those random people anyways? <laughs> yeah, well, well I'm assuming exciting, we though. junk that system. <laughs> yeah. Like, if, if you got a bunch of guys who are regular guys, God bless, but then... The, then the lobbyists get to bribe them. Yeah. Well, then yes, you're See? right. We're That's not what's any better off. Happen. Yeah. They're going to accept it. They're like Joe Blow is going to be like, yeah, I'll take ten million dollars. Yeah. yeah, maybe. Okay, they so would still one be more, more honest than the current. Probably, lobby. yeah, probably. Because we know what they're like now. So one other just sort of random idea, and this is something that's that's being tried in some parts of the world. Uh, so if you go back to sort of the birthplace of democracy, something like stereotypically Athens, you had dem direct democracy. It was not a republic. You had people who would go and they'd gather and they'd vote on things. So that is, uh, it's not feasible for most of American history because you have far too many people spread out over far too much of a, uh, too, too great a distance. But now theoretically there's no reasons why we couldn't all vote online if we wanted to on any sorts of issues or should we go to war, perhaps we have a vote. Should we do Obamacare, perhaps we have a vote. If there could be much more direct democracy in terms of people voting on issues, would you be interested in that? I like that. I, I like direct democracy. Yeah. You hate it. I hate it. I Why like do you that. Hate it? Okay, we with all I, th I thought all the masses. Could... I thought the masses knew what was up. No, no, no. They do, but it's how you get their opinion is very important. The process is very mm -hmm. important. So the reason I hate it is because we kind of have it in California, and you see how that system has been perverted. So we do the the ballot measures, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then what winds yeah. up happening with the ballot measures is they spend a tremendous amount of money trying to trick you into thinking that it's something that it isn't. Yeah. With, That's true. Okay. Yes. And so and if you're yes. and if it's not your job to study that policy issue, it's so hard to determine which side is actually which, let alone which side is the correct one. Yeah. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm. Like you get in there and you're like, wait, which one was pro environment? Oh yeah, they'll <laughs> manipulate know? the hell out of you. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. that's scary. You're right about that. And if it's yeah. not your profession to keep track of that, another thing is context, right? So when you when you have a budget Okay, well, look, I would love to spend a lot of money on education, but how much money do I have? How much money do I have for defense? How much money do I have for health care? But if you just say, go vote on education, 
well, I don't know how much money do I have. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, right. yeah. I, I guess that would be setting sort of a high bar for most people. Um, so I, I like playing devil's advocate. That's why I like talking about this sort of thing. But I think we're probably doing OK in terms of our system. But it has been subverted and perverted Absolutely. and compromised in a lot of ways. I just hope that we can fix it over time, perhaps with like a Wolfpack amendment. Get, get it back right, to, now we're having a conversation. There Wolf you go. Pack .com. Yeah. yeah, and it'll be worthy of the number one label we give it so casually. Yeah, wouldn't that be great if we fix the system through Wolfpack or well, whoever gets a constitutional amendment? And then we could actually go back to being number one. We can that go back be awesome. to being unbearable yeah. and go around to all the countries like, we're number one. <laughs> and, 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 and to some degree, like they used to in the old days, be like, God, those guys are unbearable, but kind of right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd vote for that. Yeah, <laughs> I vote too. for that too. Cheers to that. Yep. Mm hmm.